Welcome to Just a Minute. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it's my pleasure to welcome the four diverse personalities who this week are going to play just a minute. We welcome back two of the regular players of the game, that is Peter Jones and Paul Merton, and two who've only played it infrequently before, that's Jenny Eclair and Kit Hesketh Harvey. Would you please welcome all four of them? As usual, I'm going to ask them all to speak, if they can, in turn, on the subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. Beside me sits Liz Trott, who's going to keep the score and blow a whistle when 60 seconds are up. Paul Merton, would you take the first round? And the subject is playing the fool. 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. The fool in King Lear is one of Shakespeare's greatest creations. None but the fool who labours to outjest his master's heart-struck injuries. I did it for a or so I know it. I think it's a very difficult part for an actor to play because it's a very complex role. Kit Hesketh Harvey, you've challenged. Were, were there two varies there? There were. Yes, you said very before were, in different sentences. Yes. Kit, you have a point for a correct challenge and you take over the subject. You have 45 seconds available for playing the fool starting now. It is a very difficult part to play because you spend the whole of Act 3 stark naked, covered in woad, being pelted by rain in King Lear's armpit. Not a good place to be after three heavy acts. <laughs> However, Jenny Claire Shuttle. No, I, I said acts, but then I hesitated because I was just making sure I was saying acts. You did hesitate. Yes, I, did hesitate. Going... I confess. Yeah. I can... <laughs> hey, I'm <poor> <laughs> I didn't notice so I'm glad you told me. <laughs> but Jenny, we, I have to take your first challenge, and he said act and acts. So that was your first Ooh. challenge. Well. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I, no, I, have, I have to try and be fair to everybody who plays the game, and that's really, those are the rules that, you know, you can't have a subsequent challenge if you didn't get the first one right. <laughs> um, so, Kit, an incorrect challenge. You get a point for that. You keep the subject. 34 seconds, playing the fool, starting now. There can be very few parts that both Richard Bryars... Uh, Jenny, yes, parts. parts. That is right. Parts. He did say oh. before. Well, well done, done Jenny. Part. So you doesn't matter. You get in. You say, I'm glad. Yes. 32 seconds are available for you to tell us something about playing the fool starting now. Personally, I think Shakespeare's fools were rubbish, and I don't find them at all funny. But whenever I watch Shakespeare's plays, I've said Shakespeare's <sighs> twice. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Challenge. First, Paul, you got him first on Shakespeare, and 26 seconds for you to tell us something more about playing the fool starting now. It's a very difficult instrument since... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey. I'm sorry, he's just found a computer and he was doing so well. I was interested to hear his A-level. I, yeah, I, was, I was fascinated to try and get the word out. Yeah. <laughs> Another correct challenge, so another point to you, Kit. You take over the subject. 24 seconds, playing the fool, starting now. What a happy little chappy he looks in his motley and his pointy hat with its bells on it, his little pig's bladder with which he bops people as he passes. W.B. Yeats, of course, relied very heavily on the figure of the fool as the antithesis of the rose in his poetry. However, I do not know white what he meant by all this. Um, for <laughs> a deviation white what he meant? <laughs> I think it was deviation from English as it is spoke. Mm. <laughs> I'm hardly one to talk, well, I can't talk. I mean, <laughs> but Paul, another correct challenge, another point, and seven seconds available, playing the fool starting now. Norman Wisdom had a... Uh... <laughs> You're cracking, Paul. Oh, hey, I can't get a sentence out here. So, five seconds with you, kid, playing the fool starting now. Truth is a dog must be whipped to the kennel, Christ. Jenny, uh... I don't think that's got anything to do with fools. Oh, I just think he's showing off. No, 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 no. <laughs> Says, he says it, he says it. Yes, yeah, yeah, right. He does, he does. Right. Truth is a dog, he says. Yes, yes he does. Doggy. Jenny, it doesn't matter. You can show off as much as you like in just a minute, people do. He was correct. It is. That was a quotation from the fool in King Lear. Three as seconds. if you'd know, Nicholas. <laughs> not even using his own material. <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds are available for you, kid, on Playing the Fool, starting now. Mr. John Selwyn Gummer, the Minister for the... <laughs> 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 
say no more. The applause tells us everything. Right. <laughs> Kit Heskett Harvey was speaking as the whistle went, and whoever is doing that gains an extra point. And at the end of that round, Kit has gained a number of points. He's got a commanding lead over all the others. Peter Jones. Terribly <laughs> unfair, I think. I think you ought to have a steroid test. <laughs> Right. Uh, Peter Jones, it's your turn to begin. The subject is Abraham Lincoln. Will you tell us something about him in just a minute, starting now? Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth a new nation dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Ah, and then he went please, on... Well, he complained about somebody else using somebody else's material. He's ripped off Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg address here. <laughs> Well, there I was taking my cue from you because nobody <laughs> paid any attention to my complaint. <laughs> so anyway, I think he wasn't deviating because it was associated with Abraham Lincoln. So associated uh... with him. <laughs> 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 Peter, you have a point. Incorrect challenge. You keep the subject. 50 seconds are available. 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 I can't even speak now. Abraham Lincoln starting now. Well, I won't go into the rather long middle section, not because I can't remember it, but because it may go over the minute. But it does end with the idea of uh, government of the people, by the people, or... He's challenged. Who? Paul Merton has challenged you, Peter. He's dared to interrupt <laughs> those magic words. Well, I thought I challenged before you got government for the, the people, people, by the people. people. <laughs> he, he did an anticipatory oh. challenge, which has never happened before, so what do I do? Well, is that what your challenge is? No, the repetition was because. Yes, you did say because twice. Did I? Yes, I noticed that. I'm, so I must be fair. Paul, you have a correct challenge. You get a point for that, of course. 43 seconds are available. Abraham Lincoln, starting now. Of course, the old joke goes, somebody says to Mrs. Lincoln, and, well, apart from that, how did you enjoy the play? <laughs> <laughs> Trip to the theatre was a bit of a disaster. They watched the performance of a show called Our American Cousin, which has never again been repeated on the American stage. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry, the two Americans. The two Americans. Oh, so. American Cousin oh, and so American so. stage. Yes. I'm sorry, but there you Kit go. Kit Harvey, another point to you. 26 seconds available for you to tell us something about Abraham Lincoln starting now. Abraham Lincoln, statesman, emancipator of the slaves and fashion victim for he it was who first devised the little goatee beard which is now seen on the denizens of old Compton Street in London, so ho. When he was felled by the bullet of the madman Wilkes Booth who came into his theatre box and emptied... Paul Merton Charles. Why is he talking like Derek Nimmer? <laughs> Some contractual agreement or something? <laughs> Probably because Derek's played the game so often he finds this maybe a better way to keep going. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, Paul, what we'll do is, to be fair, we, the audience enjoyed your challenge. Shall we give you a bonus point for that? <laughs> but Kit Heskett Harvey gets a, a point for being interrupted. He has seven seconds to continue on Abraham Lincoln starting now. Born in Kentucky, I believe, a backwoodsman who numbered log chopping and boat handling. <laughs> 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 Some hesitation. Yes. <laughs> Lost, I think, would be more. <laughs> Two seconds, Paul. Abraham Lincoln starting now. Of course, he was famous for building the log cabin. He was born. Uh, Paul Merton was speaking as well, so when gained that extra point, both he and Kit Heskett Harvey have gained a lot of points in that round. Kit's in the lead, Paul comes second, and then Peter and Jenny in equal in third place. Jenny, it's your turn to begin, and the subject is horror films. Will you tell us something about that genre in this game, starting now? It would be very easy for me to play the part of a beast in a horror film. All I'd need to do is take my makeup off. Oh! Oh, what a frightening sight I am. Very scary indeed. I am a, cos a cadaver in cosmetics, lady and gentlemen. Kit, you got in first. You got tangled with her lip gloss. Yes. Poor girl. Yeah. <laughs> Another point, Kit. 48 <laughs> seconds. 
horror films starting now. Frankly, any film starring Bela Lugosi or Peter Cushing, later Whitstable, bless him, or Christopher Lee, leave me squealing with laughter. No, what I find truly horrible are films with Ken Russell and Glenda Jackson working in tandem. <laughs> when the future Labour MP for Hampstead bears all in women in love or in the music lovers and waves and gyrates her withers at an unfeeling camera, my knuckles whiten, the back of my neck goes prickly and cold sweat bespangles my brow. No, take me away. <laughs> He's doing it again. <laughs> It's good silent. stuff, though, isn't it? You've got to admit it. Oh, it's great. And this audience is enjoying it as well. <laughs> Paul, uh, he wasn't actually deviating, hesitating, or repeating anything, so no. he keeps horror films. 20 seconds, kit, starting now. Little Jimmy Osmond singing Long Haired Lover from <laughs> Liverpool on Top of the Pop. Paul Merton. Uh, uh, well, I had the challenge, but he just got in Top of the Pop, so I was saying he was deviating from horror films, but he got to Top of the Pop, so. So I withdraw that challenge gracefully. So he gets a point for being interrupted. Kit, you continue 16 seconds. Horror film starting now. What I find very horrific are the cameras that stop you speeding uh, by Paul the Merton challenge. We had cameras before. Yes, you did. Glenda Jackson before the cameras. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 13 seconds left, Paul, for you to tell us something about horror films starting now. My favourite line in any horror film is the 1931 version of Dracula that has the exchange between the Count and Professor von Hausen and... The, oh. uh, Jenny... <laughs> I just thought he needs the Professor von Hausen. He hesitated terribly badly. He did. Yeah. But Jenny's buzzer went first. I'm sorry, Peter. Sorry, the reflex is a bit quicker because I'm younger. Um... <laughs> oh. Oh! oh. 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 Sorry. Is it going Jenny. to be a fight? Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, you know how to wound, don't you? Right. There are four seconds for you on horror films starting now. Vampires are pop. Peter Jones at Chad. Hesitation. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I... <laughs> I know, but it was hoisted on your own petard. He was showing he has got quicker reflexes than you. <laughs> he got in before you even started. I was say that Peter <laughs> got in. <laughs> Peter, you have uh, three and a half seconds on horror films starting now. I don't like them. They're not really entertainment. Jenny Would this be a more amusing? Hesitate, yes, he did. Right, Jenny, you've got two and a half seconds on horror films starting now. I don't like them. Peter, you challenge. Yes. <laughs> I didn't, uh, yes, it is. Well, well done, Peter. You've got one and a half seconds on horror films starting now. What can I do with one and a half? Yes, Jenny, Eclair, and Peter mm. Jones got points in that round, and they've still equal and moving forward, but they haven't caught up Kit and Paul yet. Kit, your turn to begin. Oh, my, what a subject. Training a crab to walk forwards. What? <laughs> Can you hold for thought, I think, first, and then take, gird your verbal loins and forge into that one. 60 seconds starting now. Because of my blameless moral rectitude, of course, my acquaintance with crabs is not as intimate as that of Nicholas Parsons, for example. However, should one wish to train a crab to walk forwards, the answer is to disguise oneself as a prawn with some seaweed and walk up and down in front of it, blushing prettily and provocatively. If this fails, you can tie a piece of kenno meat to a length of thread. <laughs> Peter, you've just... Uh, hesitation. Hesitation's correct, Peter. 37 seconds available for you to tell us something about training a crab to walk forwards, starting now. Ian Messiter invented this game 30 or more years ago, and he still supplies the subjects. And it's my opinion that he's now lost his marbles. <laughs> Trying to train a crab to walk forwards would be like trying to train a whippet to walk sideways. Quite a waste of time and probably you'd incur the wrath of the... Uh, no, no, you're allowed to say walk, aren't you? Yes. But What's I that? Your yes, because walk sorry, is one... You can just to remind the, the listeners, you can repeat the subjects on the card mm. and the kit challenge for walk mm. and uh, he did repeat it, but it's on the card. So, Peter, an incorrect challenge, a point to you. You continue on that subject. Ten seconds starting now. You see, the idea would be to be very cruel to the crab, and that would incur the wrath of the Royal uh, Institute for uh, Rabbit, blah, 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 whatever it was. Yes, the Royal in Institute for the Preservation of Fish. Is that it? No. Is that just... <laughs> well, it might get a laugh, but it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anybody yeah, with a the... challenge? Was it Kit, Derek Nimmo over there? What? Yes, it's the Derek Nimmo voice alike. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kit, four seconds for you on training a crab to walk forwards, starting now. In training a crab to walk forwards, it's as well to furnish yourself with a stout pair of gardens. Mr. Harvey got more points, including one for speaking as the whistle went, and it's surging forward into a strong lead at the end of the round. Paul Merton, your turn to begin. The subject is space hoppers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do you think it's just funny, or just that Paul should have the subject? Eh? <laughs> anyway, that's the subject, Paul. 60 seconds, starting now. I suppose the most effective space hoppers are aeroplanes, because they hop from one country to another land mass, and this is a very succinct and quick way of travelling around. Kit, it wasn't uh, succinct or quick, really, was it? I mean, no, a uh, deviation. Why? I'm sorry, I thought he said this is very succinct and quick, and then he, then he dug himself out of it, and I was going to say it wasn't either succinct or quick. He was floundering horribly. We do. I, I, think I wish I were dead. <laughs> I wish I were in a little box Kit, and buried. you're blithering. You're I'm blithering, sorry. darling. I'm blithering. I, I want you're to trying too hard, actually. <laughs> so, Paul, an incorrect challenge, a point to you. 48 seconds. Space hoppers are starting now. They were very popular in the 1970s. They were made out of rubber, and you inflated them, and you bounced up and down the street on them. They had little horns sticking out the top, and you used to sit on them. They had shaped like kangaroos, some of them, and bounce all the way down, bounce, uh, bounce, Jenny, bounce. Jenny, okay, bounce, <laughs> bounce, bounce. Yes, Jenny, you've got in on bounce, and 36 seconds available. Space hoppers are starting now. My only mode of transport when I was a teenager off, I'd go to discos on my space hopper, and you used to clutch onto them. It was very good for the inner thigh muscles. In fact, if I hadn't swapped my... Um, uh, what was it called, anyway? Yes. yes. She came to, she stopped. She stopped. Yes, 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 all right. I completely forgot what I was talking about. Mm, I That's what it was funny, though. It happens. Yes, yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> 27 seconds on space hoppers starting now. What is curious is that if you look at the face on the front of a space hopper, it looks not unlike Jenny Eau Claire's happy, <laughs> optimistic, chipmunk sort of face that's very encouraging. Paul Merton challenge. Repetition of face. There's two faces there, yes. So, Paul, a correct challenge, another point, 19 seconds. Space hoppers starting now. I never forget Vera and George space hopper. What a charming <laughs> bunch of neighbours they were. They used to <laughs> lean across the garden fence and shout, cooey, and other kind of sort of ribald, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. You lose confidence, then, yeah. Peter, you got in with the correct challenge of hesitation, yes, I did, yes. and you got eight seconds on space hoppers starting now. They are really stowaways on spaceships, and they can't hide in lifeboats because they don't have any on these particular vehicles. <laughs> So, Peter Jones was speaking as the whistle went and his move forward. He's still in third place, Paul's in second place, Kit's in the lead, and Jenny's trailing a little. Peter Jones, it's your turn to begin. Where I took my holiday. 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. Oh, it was a wonderful place. All the landladies were beautiful and young, and the ah. traffic wardens... Jenny, you Oh, he's hesitating and lying. No. <laughs> I don't think he did either, actually. 55 seconds, still available to you, Peter, on where I took my holiday, starting now. And the traffic wardens actually... Jenny, you the traffic wardens. I know, but that was after you buzzed, actually. Uh, was it? Yes. You're being so very she... pedantic, Nicholas. I know, I have to be fair, because if I wasn't, Peter would be upset because I had... No, been... I wouldn't. I would never <laughs> Peter upset. wouldn't care less. <laughs> 53 seconds, where I took my holiday, Peter, starting now. They help you to find places to park, and the food is just absolutely out of this world. And it's terribly cheap. You pay hardly anything at all, really. And I'm not going to tell you <laughs> where it is. He's not, hasn't told us where it is, and he's just... Uh, then there was a big hesitation. He definitely hesitated, yes, Jenny. You're quite right there. And you have a point for that. And you have 41 seconds to tell us something about where I took my holiday starting now. Well, I didn't take holiday that, this year. That's why I'm in such a nervous state, and I've got skin condition problems, and um, I'm in a bit of a state. Um, <laughs> Good challenge. And I'm so about to have a nervous arm. breakdown. Yeah. What? It was an arm. Yeah, but it was such a rush arm that I'm not going to allow okay, it. Okay, you carry on. me. Yeah. Yeah. I long to know. having a nervous breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 35 seconds. Still with you, Jenny. Where I took my holiday starting now. The last time I went on holiday, I went to the north of Mallorca. Actually nicer than people think, but unfortunately, we went with another family. What a mistake! You always think you know people, but until you go on holiday, oh, you don't really. It was awful. We all fell out. Nobody's talking to each other anymore. <laughs> I tried to kill my best Jenny. friend, Sutton. <laughs> I 
I know you get very carried away, but Paul did challenge quite a while back. Oh. Paul. It's a repetition of went. You went. You went to the first time you went on my holiday, and the second time you started, you went on your holiday. Sorry, Jenny. 26 seconds for you, Paul. Where I took my holiday, it's starting now. Well, I decided to take my holiday to Spain, because it hadn't had a holiday itself for quite a long while. <laughs> and it had a wonderful time, a fortnight curled up in a deck chair, the time of its life. It would eat all kinds of things, like crisps, prawn crackers, nuts of all sorts of descriptions, and sip the most delicious drinks, the most wonderful... Oh, yeah. Kit has been Harvey. <laughs> there are two of them. The most, the most yes, there were indeed. Six seconds, Kit, you've gone in cleverly, only six seconds ago, when I took my holiday, starting now. We went to Thailand, to the islands of Crappy, Pee Pee and Poo, but when we... <laughs> <laughs> in your challenge, book? Repetition of pee. Yes. <laughs> it's one word. <laughs> You've actually given me a dilemma because I know it's one word, that's the name of the island, but we, we play this on the verbal sound, so PP is repetition, oh, well, isn't it, can, really? Isn't it? So mm. I think within the rules of just a minute, we have to say you've got a correct challenge for uh, three seconds when I took my holiday starting now. I went to Phuket once, I don't know how you pronounce it, but that's how I do. <laughs> Paul Merton speaking as a whistle when gained another point as well as others in the round move forward. He's only two points behind our leader who is still Kit Hesketh Harvey. Jenny, your turn to begin. The subject is sun-dried tomatoes. Will you tell us something about <laughs> that subject in this game starting now? Interestingly enough, some vegetarian friends of mine left some sun-dried tomatoes in my cupboard recently. Oh, ah. I thought I can't wait. Paul, tell us. Deviation, that's not interesting at all. <laughs> Wait, Just a minute. The really thing is, Paul, answer. it may not be interesting to you, but it was obviously interesting to Jenny. So that's how we interpret that. All right. And uh, she has another point for an incorrect challenge. 55 seconds, sun-dried tomatoes starting now. They're very healthy, you know. Sometimes I lob one at my daughter and she says, What is this muck, mother? Give me some E-numbers, you witch from hell. And you know, sun-dried tomatoes, if you soak them, become plump and luscious. Unlike me, if I have a dip in a bath for a few hours, I become wrinkly and red and like a sun-dried tomato. Uh, Paul Merton, you have to become. Yes, you'll become. Come, yes. Fine, Paul. Yes. <laughs> 40 seconds, Paul. Sun-dried tomatoes starting now. It sounds like an obscure headline in a newspaper. Sun-dried tomatoes. In the same way that I always thought that chicken fried rice should be <laughs> some sort of words on the front of a publication. Kiss us challenge. Kiss us. Sort of. Some sort of. Yes, the two sort of. Yes. So, Kit, you've listened true, well true, and you've got 27 true. seconds to tell us you Couldn't agree about more. <laughs> Sun-dried tomatoes starting now. Personally, I think they taste foul of old library books, and the texture is that of bedroom slippers. And if you try to pull them out of their jar, the oil dribbles right up your sleeve and all the way down the road in Islington, which is where they are mostly consumed by Tony Blair, I should think, and his ilk. However, they are... <laughs> oh, Charlie. I didn't know Tony Blair had an elk. <laughs> Keep it <laughs> in the shadow cabinet. Have the press uh, got hold of this? Uh, Paul, we love the challenge, so we give you a bonus point for that. But actually, uh, Kit wasn't deviating, hesitating, or repeating anything, so he keeps the subject and gets a point for being interrupted. 13 seconds, sun dried tomatoes starting now. They are believed to be full of the flavour of Italy, the best tomatoes left to ripen in that beating Tuscan sun. They taste of Helena Bonham Carter. They taste of, oh dear, I've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes? He tasted twice. He was thinking about mm. Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> Okay. Three seconds, sun-dried tomatoes, Jenny, starting now. I have absolutely nothing to say about sun-dried tomatoes. I can't uh, bear them. Done. <laughs> Uh, she can still say it, never said it within just a minute and still try. I've been on the whistle, right. I think I've won the round. Okay? No, that's right. So you were interrupted with half a second to go. You've got another point for an incorrect oh, challenge. Fantastic. And you have that's half right. a second to go on sun dried tomatoes starting now. Sun dried tomatoes. <laughs> So, Jenny Clare got two very quick points there, and she's moved forward with uh, equal place in third with Peter Jones, and they're both training Paul Merton and Kit Heskett Harvey in that order. And as we enter the last round, mm. Paul, it's your turn to begin. Toast 
Do tell us something about that in just a minute, starting now. First, select your bread, fresh preferably. Pick it out of the packet, take it over to the toaster, slide it in the slot at the top, push the switch down on the side of the machine in which the bread now resides. If it's plugged in, you'll notice that the elements will begin to glow with a warmth which can only be described as heat. <laughs> bread in for long enough that oh no <laughs> yes. he said bread yes, twice he did yes. say bread and yes. he was being a bit smutty wasn't he he was all like sexy wasn't it Sorry, I've I never heard well. anybody make yeah. toast sexy before, but he's hot. 34 seconds are available for toast with you, Jenny, starting now. I like my toast golden and bendy so it doesn't snap into little smithereens all over the plate. It drives me crazy when that happens. You know, for breakfast every morning, I have a toasted sandwich with beetroot in it. I'm that kind ah. of girl. Paul Merton's sandwich. Repetition. Every morning she has this for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, every morning. <laughs> It was um, a delightful challenge, but she wasn't hesitating, repeating anything or deviating. So you get a point because we enjoyed the challenge. Jenny gets a point for being interrupted. She keeps toast and 25 seconds to tell us more about it starting now. Do you remember back in the 80s, toasted sandwich makers were really fashionable, but very dangerous indeed, because if you heat up a sandwich in one of those machines, the cheese and inside... And the kit challenge. The two sandwiches. The two sandwiches, I'm afraid, Jenny. Oh, yes. Yes, they were. Yes. 18 seconds on toast with you kids starting now. In the seminal novel about rugby school, Flashman, the school villain, takes Tom Brown and stretches him out in front of the fireplace, bears his buttocks so that they turn a lovely, crispy, golden brown colour. <laughs> and then taking a crumpet fork, no doubt, jabs it Jenny, into the pork. Peter, you Well, I thought that was rather sadistic. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Take And me. he seemed to be enjoying it. <laughs> So, deviation, right, three seconds for you on toast, Peter, starting now. Toast and marmalade, my favourite food. I really enjoy it. So, at the end of that round, Peter was again speaking as a whistle and gained an extra point in that last round. It's actually much closer to the end than we thought, because Kit took a commanding lead, but the others have all caught him up, and they're only a point or two behind. Jenny Clare got, oh, quite a lot of points, 16, actually. He's only two behind Peter Jones, who's only two behind Paul Merton, and he's only two behind Kit Hesketh Harvey. So, as he's got most points, we say, he is the winner this week, Kit! to say thank you to our four brave panellists and also to Liz Trott who has kept the score so well and also to Ian Messiter who created the game and helps to keep us all in work and our producer Anne Jobson and me Nicholas Parsons. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute from all of us here. Goodbye.